Hello friends. So today I'll be talking on this topic steroid in ARDS. So this topic uh, I believe is fairly uh, controversial and it has been discussed multiple times. So then I realized uh, still there is a lack of clarity amongst many of our ICU trainees. So it is good now in the light of uh, the evidence that has evolved in COVID and the recent trial that happened in pneumonia Cape Cod. Uh, I thought it's good to review this uh, again, the studies that have been done in ARDS. So when we talk about steroids in ARDS, so there are reasonably good trials done. And I'm sure all the ICU trainees were hearing the first trial that came which made noise was Meduri's trial. So after that, the ArtsNet group from US, they also did a trial. So initially these trials were negative. So then there were good meta-analysis, two meta-analysis which came, which pointed out to possible benefit of steroids. And then the most recent trial was from the Spanish group that came in the thick of COVID in 2020 in Lancet. Again, putting the light or, or, or giving a signal towards benefit of steroids in the ideas. And that is when we had a recovery trial also that came in. We showed benefit of steroids in COVID ERDS. So this is a sort of evolution that has happened with regards to steroids in ERDS. So I just thought it is good to revisit this topic so that we all have some good clarity on what is the current status of steroids in ERDS. So this was the first trial that came in 2007. So if you see the title of this trial, Methyl Prednisolone Infusion in Early Severe ERDS. Uh, it's a randomized controlled trial that came in chess. So this created a lot of uh, sort of enthusiasm amongst intensivists that steroids does have a role in ARDS. So this was a randomized controlled trial done in five hospital ICUs. So there were only 91 patients enrolled where methylprednisolone was used within 72 hours of ARDS onset. It was a hugely positive trial. So 66% of these patients who were recruited with ARDS had sepsis as a cause. So the primary endpoint they saw was reduction in the single point lung injury score and patients were successfully extubated at seven days. So when you look at the results, I'll just only go through the important trials and the meta-analysis and what, what we can sort of conclude at the end of it. So when you look at the results of this trial, there were 91 patients, 63 patients were in methyl prednisolone group and 28 were in the placebo. Methyl prednisolone, the dose, see the dosage is something each trial has used different dosages. So just pay attention to the type of dosages each trials have used. So this trial used 1 mg per kg per day for 28 days, which means in India, if you take 60 kilos as an average sort of a weight, 60 milligrams of methyl prednisolone was given for 28 days. And as I already said, it's a hugely positive trial. The reduction of the lung injury score by one point happened significantly more in methyl prednisolone group at 69.8% compared to 35%. So that was statistically significant. And the, the second primary endpoint which they looked at, successfully who were extubated at seven days, more number of patients were extubated in methyl prednisolone group, 53.9% as compared to 25%. And mortality, even there was a mortality benefit in Meduri's trial, it was 20.6% was the mortality in methyl prednisolone as compared to 42.9 and that was also statistically significant. And ICU length of stay also was lower in methyl. So this is a hugely positive, which, which is very provocative and compels any intense wish to think that methyl prednisolone is a game changer. So ICU length of stay was lower, duration of mechanical ventilation was lower, even the risk of infection was lower in methyl prednisolone group and CRP was lower at day seven. Um, and the, in patients, especially with lower injury score and MODS. So that was the result of Meduri's trial. So when this trial came, so we all sort of embarked on using methylprednisolone uh, in ARDS in the dose they had mentioned at 1 mg per kg as an infusion uh, for, a, for at least two weeks and then we used to wean. So that was the practice that we had. Then after this, this tri particular trial came around that same time, which was by the ArtsNet group. So efficacy and safety of corticosteroid for persistent acute respiratory disease. So this came at around same time when the Meduri's trial came. And as you see, this was conducted by the ArtsNet group. So, and based on this trial, so we sort of delineated the ARDS uh, sort of a phenotypes into early and late based on this particular trial. Because if you start late, 
this trial showed use of steroids is harmful. But early usage did not show benefit in this. It showed sort of uh, equivocal. So this was a randomized controlled trial. So the primary endpoint they looked was was at 60 day mortality. Secondary endpoint they looked at ventilatory free days and organ failure free days. So here in Meduris, as you saw, there were 90 odd patients. Here it was 180 patients. So it was a much larger group of patients. Methyl prednisolone was used in 89 patients and placebo. So this was a much robust trial as compared to Meduris because they had more number of patients and more number of patients recruited in methyl prednisolone and placebo group. Here, look at the dose because Meduris used 1 mg per kg. Here, they used double the dose. They used 2 mg per kg. So they used 2 mg per kg and then they later went to 0.5 milligrams per kg. They used 2 mg and then 0.5 milligram per kg is 6 hour. It becomes sort of 2 mg per kg for 14 days. After that, they been to 0.5 mg, which means 1 mg per kg for 7 days. So, they used 2 mg for 14 days, followed by 1 mg per kg for uh, next 7 days, and they tapered over the days. So, both Meduris and this Artsnet group tends to use steroids for at least 4 weeks. So, 28 days Meduris used, even this Artsnet used for 4 weeks. So, that is the sort of a dosage and uh, the duration that you can just keep in back of your mind when you are thinking of using steroids in ARDS. So what was the result? 180 patients, so 89 in early methylprednisolone group and 91 in placebo group. So 60-day mortality, as you see, there was no difference between methylprednisolone and placebo group. So Meduris was usually positive. At around same time, Artsnet came. So where they used early methylprednisolone is where they used within 7 to 13 days. After 14 days, it was considered as late usage of methylprednisolone. So they divided into two groups, early methylprednisolone group and late methylprednisolone. So 180-day mortality also no distance between early methylprednisolone and placebo. But this the, the strength of the study was they looked at the late methylprednisolone group where they started methylprednisolone after 14 days, after two weeks. Here it very clearly showed that the 60-day and 180-day mortality was significantly higher if methylprednisolone was used in the later phase of ARDS after 14 days. So this sort of put, put a sort of a clinical sort of a practice pattern where in early ARDS we used embark on using 1 mg per kg methylprednisolone, but in the late onset ARDS we, we would desist from using methylprednisolone from the signals that this trial showed us that mortality at 60 days and 180 days significantly increases with the late usage of methylprednisolone. So this was the evidence pre-COVID that we had. And here, even mechanical ventilation plus organ failure three days also had uh, increased, or actually had decreased. So that was also some de detrimental factor that was found in this. And the uh, risk of infection, there was no risk, increased risk of infection in late methylprednisolone groups. So that was the evidence we had pre-COVID. Uh, so so these two trials came in 2006-7. So after that, there was this meta-analysis that came in critical care medicine in 2009. So this is also an interesting meta-analysis. It's a good one by Tang et al. Use of corticosteroids in acute lung injury and ERDS, systematic review and meta-analysis. So they took all the studies where they used methylprednisolone at a dose of 0.5 to 2.5 milligram per kg. So just focus on the dosages. Meduris used one. So the arts that used 2 mg then been to 1 mg and this particular meta-analysis took all the studies which use steroid methylprednisone anywhere between 0.5 to 2.5 mg. So in this meta-analysis, they had five cohort studies with 307 patients and they took four randomized control trials. In this four randomized control trials, one was that arts net group and there were two Meduris trials. Uh, arts cities, four arts cities, they had 341 patients. So they looked at mortality in the cohort studies group and they found that the, as you see the 95% confidence interval, it is not statistically significant. P is 0 0.06, just about misses the significance. So there was no mortality benefit with the use of steroids in cohort studies. And so was the case when they analyzed the studies in RCTs, P is equal to 0 0.08 and confidence interval, if you see, it is not significant. So when they took separately cohort studies and analyzed, so the use of steroids did not show benefit. When they used RCTs and they looked at mortality also, steroids did was not found to be helpful. But 
in this maternity when they combine cohort studies and rcts together they attain statistical significance relative risk was 0.62 and p was 0.01 and 95 percent confidence interval attain statistical significance when they combined nine studies five from cohort and rct so that was the strength of this so basically again it puts up a signal towards possible benefit with the usage of steroids when they combined four RCTs and five cohort studies. So, at around, so after this, Meduri came out with a meta-analysis in 2016. So this meta-analysis, which came out in 2016 in intensive care, showed again there was a reduction in mortality with the usage of steroids. Meta-analysis obviously combined four studies and looked at reduction in mortality and there was increase in the number of patients who who went on to wean this unassisted breathing, UAB is unassisted breathing. In their study, they used the word unassisted breathing. So they had more patients who were liberated from the ventilator and the there was reduced duration um, of, uh, there was actually increased duration of the patients who had unassisted breathing or there was a reduced time taken to liberate them from ventilator. So these are the two meta-analyses which point towards possible benefit of steroids and we looked into the subgroup analysis in this meta-analysis. So if you look at this forest plot, so as you see mortality, the diamond is to the left and it favors the treatment. And even if you look at the mechanical ventilation, you see the diamond move to the left, so favors the steroid group. And when even when they look at the MOD score, it favors the steroid group. So this was the two meta-analysis that came and, uh, and these are the subgroups sort of a analysis which shows the number of studies and and and, and uh, the groups that are favoring the use of steroids so so this was the evidence until pre covid because these are the studies with 2016 before we could only speak about meduris trial arsnet study and these two meta analysis as i said the trials were negative but the meta analysis were pointing towards possible benefit of usage of steroids in ards and then in the thick of COVID, when the recovery trial came, this particular trial came, which changed the whole paradigm of possible benefit of steroids. And I want every intensivist to go through this trial because this is the trial which is possibly again making us revisit the role of steroids in ARDS. This trial, which came in Lancet, March 2020, the title is Dexamethasone Treatment for ARDS multicentric randomized control trial. This came while sick of COVID, but this is not COVID patients. This is non-COVID. They had done this study. This was a multicentric randomized control trial done in 17 ICUs. The criteria, inclusion criteria was they took moderate to severe ARDS with PAO to FIO2 less than 200 on FIO2 more than 50% and PEEP more than 10 for 20. So they took sickest of the ARDS who, who had a PF ratios less than 200 on FIO2 of 50 and PEEP of 10 for 24 hours. So look at the dose here. I want to appreciate you. I uh, want you to appreciate the dose. Here again, they use dexamethasone 20 mg. I have just equated to the methylphenicillone dose. 20 mg dexamethasone is equal to 106 mg of methylphenicillone. So you can, so the type of dose they have used is like the ArtsNet, about 2 mg per kg they have used. And they have used for day 1 to day 5. After that, they have reduced to 10 mg per OD, which is 53 mg methylphenicillone. So I would put it as Meduris regime, around 60 mg up to 10 days. So if you see Meduris regime, they used for up to 4 weeks. Artsnet group also used up to 4 weeks. But this trial used for 10 days of dexamethasone at a dose which is similar to the Artsnet group, around 2 mg per kg, mean to 1 mg per kg of methylphenicillone. Uh, so here they use DEXA. So primary endpoint was to look at 28-day ventilatory three days. Secondary outcome, they looked at 60-day mortality. And this is also a hugely positive study favoring the usage of steroids. So they had 277 patients. So if you look at Meduris had around 90 and ArtsNet group had around 180 patients. This is the largest study in steroids. So we need to possibly give a little more weightage to this study. 277 patients, 139 in the dexamethasone group. 138 in the control group. And if you see ventilatory free days were more in depth, which is good, which means they had a shorter duration of mechanical ventilation. And 60-day mortality, and it's very hard to see mortality benefit in any of the ICU studies. This study showed a significant 60-day mortality benefit, 21% in dexamethasone group and 36% in the control group. And serious adverse events, there was no difference uh, between these two groups. 
obviously would expect little hyperglycemia in dexamethasone group but did not attain statistical significance and the new insects also there was not so all the studies the the meduri trial or the artsnet study group and meta analysis all these have showed no increase in the risk of infections at a dose they have used which is you can very safely keep this in mind up to 2 mg per kg of methyl prednisolone did not show increase in the risk of infection in any of these studies so which is something which we should take comfort from while still using steroids in ads because we always dread the risk of infections in our icu so the new infect also there was no increase in the risk in dexamethasone and the need for prone ventilation also was significantly less in dexamethasone group it was 20% as compared to 30% and sofa score also was lower at day 3 and pao2 fio2 at day 6 also was higher in so it is a very positive study like meduris uh, uh, trial that we saw in 2006 that there was a mortality reduction need for prone ventilation was lower the severity score disease severity score was lower at day 6 and pao2 fio2 was higher at day 6 and this is the kaplan meier curve showing again significant benefit of dexamethasone so in discussion again uh, they have spoken more about all the anti inflammatory properties of the steroids and how it reduces the progression of the infiltrates and the inflammatory cascade within the lung and they did a sub group analysis in the multi organ so the death due to multi organ failure as a sub group they saw and they found that was significantly less in the dexamethasone group 9% as compared to 17% in the control group that also attained status so it is a hugely positive study which came in 2020 again putting some emphasis this is the largest sort of a randomized controlled trial of the use of steroids in ads as i said meduris had 90 patients artsnet had 180 and this had around 270 patients so which is much larger uh, sort of a study so and the strength of this study is, as i said it's the largest rct there were the strength of this particular trial was there were no biases there was no selection bias no performance bias no attrition bias or no report so these are the strengths authors have claimed in the discussion so all in all so this is how the story of steroids has evolved in ards and why steroids have come back with vengeance or with a big bang is the recovery trial came around this time and now most recently we got this cape cod trial which i just want you to revise there is a separate video on that i'll just show you so this is what we discussed in one of the video cape cod trial came as late as as late as march 2023 or april 2023 where use of hydrocortisone in severe community acquired pneumonia the use of hydrocortisone showed lowered risk of mortality at day 28 so all in all there is a resurgence of corticosteroids in a big way because we know severe community acquired pneumonia can go on to ards so you can see that sort of a correlation where steroids seems to have made a big comeback where initially although meduris in 2006 showed some hope the subsequent trials did not show but the meta analysis were always pointing out towards benefit of steroids in ards this villar et al which came from the spain reemphasizes possibly there is a role of steroids in ards at a dose of 1 to 2 mg per kg and this was only re-strengthened by this cape cod trial which came in 2023 again showing benefit of steroids where they used hydrocortisone at a dose of 200 mg as an infusion where it show, showed reduction in 28 day mortality so so that's the whole thing about the journey of steroids so it is very important that every iq trainee have this clarity in their mind because the reason i was making this video is i was asking all my trainees about role of steroids and none of them seem to have some good clarity so i i, I thought it's good that we revisit this topic so that we all have a good understanding of the trials that have happened until now with regards to role of steroids in ards so it seems to hold promise at a dose of 1 to 2 mg without significant increase in the risk of infection but one has to be cautious to use steroids maybe in the later phase after 14 days because artsnet group clearly showed there was increase in the 60 day and 120 day mortality so i request all my listeners to uh, present their work so valuable work to our journal of acute care which comes out every 3 months So you can visit my website www.drpradeeplanga.com to rehab to this lecture. So thank you, thank you, Varun.